Good morning, Krishna. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 110 Identity in Christ. So, I hope as we are studying on this course week after week, are we getting ourselves into this new identity where we are able to identify ourselves in Christ? Is this class helping each one of us to identify ourselves in Christ? Anyone from the class online, on campus? How is it helping you identify yourself in Christ? Are there any instances that you know you were reminded of yourself by the Lord saying that, hey, listen, no matter where you are, what circumstance it is, no matter what others are talking about you. Remember your identity. Your identity is in me. Anyone from the class? Anyone from the class? Yes, Nina. Uh, could you pass the mic to Nina, please? Yeah. There's some chat. Let me check from online. Uh, uh, yes. So many times, actually, uh, when you go through tough times in life, um, so down, but I have to preach to myself that I'm a child of God. God, God loves me. And I literally look into you know, what Jesus has done for me and who I am in Christ is really encouraged. Otherwise, Amen. it's a, I mean, very sad situations. Yes. If I'm not remembering about that. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Very encouraging. Chira, you would like to share? Yes. Please pass the mic to him. Yeah, as we know that we are childs of God, right? We are sitting before God with God Jesus. So I feel like uh, the authority, right? Sometimes uh, circumstances came in our life. I feel that I am child of God. I have that authority to uh, rebuke the things that Amen. really helped me to grow. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Chira. Anyone from the class? Karen from online, would you like to share? You can unmute and speak. Karen, you can unmute and share your experience. Was there any instance in your life that, that you identified yourself, that you are in Christ and you are an overcomer? Hello, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so, Pastor, I was all, always like identified uh, like based on my class with standard I'm studying in. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Kerry. So, uh, so when I joined AD ADTS, that's when they taught us on uh, our identity that we we are identified like who we are in Christ and how Jesus is the one who helps us uh, with our identity. Okay, thanks for sharing, Karen. Thank you. That sounds good. It's sometimes very important for us to renew our mind and understand that who we are in Christ. Krisha, Shiv Kumar, Samuel, would you like to unmute and share how the word, the class, the teaching from the class has helped us to renew our mind and it has ministered to each of us how to handle and overcome our situation? Good morning, Pastor. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, Pastor, like many times when we act our human nature, when we act in flesh, uh, our identity in Christ reminds us how we are supposed to be like him and act like him and behave in every way like him. So, yeah, that's how identity in Christ reminds like helps us. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Krisha. Yes. Anyone else from the class? I see Jachin has shared a comment on the chat saying that recently someone close to me who knew me from a child 
childhood okay spoke something against me and the ministry that i'm called to do i was upset and getting emotional when god reminded me of who i am in him god's word told me that he is my righteousness and my battle belongs to him i'm fighting from victory ground this truth set me free amen praise god that's a wonderful way to set our mind on the word and what the law speaks about each of us that helps us not to take up the battle on our own but then allow the lord to uh, to work on behalf of us we are also allowing the law to defend us we are not defending ourselves but then we are asking god would you take my back and you defend us okay anyone else would like to share offline or online even before we could begin our session with a word of prayer anyone rin and shawn are pondering what to share what instances there's so many but we had to think on what we can because when we when we walk uh, uh you know uh, every day when we walk with the lord every day keeping him in our mind i think every moment is a testimony because we are uh, we are trying to lead our life that pleases god and that cannot be done with our own strength that cannot it's not possible with our human strength but then we see god we ask god god you move and you work in and through me there's also another uh, chat on the uh, uh, status i see from shiv kumar says when satan put thoughts of discouragement in our mind identity in christ helps me to resist and overcome this is what the scripture says when you speak the word to the enemy he flees from you and you resist him with the word of god because the word of god has the power to make the enemy flee from each of us yeah okay so in today's class we're going to study we are going to look into in last class we actually studied on what being one body with christ being one body with christ i'm just taking the notes just give me a minute okay we covered on being many members in christ so last class we looked at being one body in christ that was on section 11 and today we're going to study about how we are ministers and ambassadors in christ that's in section 12 we are going to look at how we are ministers and ambassadors in christ even before we could begin with this section can i request one of us to lead us in prayer who has the mic yes lord jesus lord we thank you for this time lord uh, we thank you for this class that we are hearing lord father and lord right now lord uh, we submit our minds and we submit our ourselves uh, before you lord father and lord what you are your teaching us uh, through diana ma'am lord father let your word uh, be sown into our hearts and uh, let your truth be established in our life lord father and help us not to just be the listeners of your word but help us to do be the doers of your word lord father and help us lord to uh, be aware of uh, who we are in you and help us to carry our true identity in you Jesus we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name we pray amen 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 so we are the ministers and ambassadors of Christ Jesus let's turn to our notes to page 107 one of seven but says each one of us each one of us when we identify ourselves in Christ Jesus we are the ministers and we are the ambassadors of Christ Jesus so at 
at our church, at our APC ministries, we believe and we emphasize that every believer is a minister of God. What do we emphasize on and what do we believe? We believe that every believer is a minister. Every believer is a minister. So can we please place our hand on ourselves and say, Lord, I am a minister of God. Can we declare it over ourselves? I am a minister of God. I am the ambassador of Christ Jesus. So today we're going to talk on this heavenly call. We all would have studied this in Fulfilling God's Purpose and Minister's Foundation under Fulfilling God's Purpose. We would have studied that each of us have a call and have a purpose in our life. Do you all believe that we have a call and a purpose in our life? From where did you get this call and a purpose? From where did you get this call and a purpose? From God. God himself has called you. Now, how do you know the confirmation that God has called me? How do you know? Because many times, and it puts this thought in your mind, you are incorrectly believing that there is a call on your life. It's nothing like that. But then we need to get back to the word because the word has the power. Because the word is correct. There is no error in the word of God. So the word of God says, I have called you in your mother's womb. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, the scripture says, God knew each of us by name. Each of us, even before the foundation of the earth. This is what in Ephesians chapter 1, 4, he says that I knew you even before the foundation of the earth. I know you. And even before I could knit you in your mother's womb, I know you. And in Psalms 139, very clearly, say, God says, like, you know, there was nothing hidden from my eyes. Your bones were formed before me in your mother's womb. And you were wonderfully, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not a mistake. You are created according to God's plan. So there is a call and there's a purpose. No matter what circumstance you're going through, no matter what situation you are been placed in, you need to trust and believe that you are part of God's plan. God is working in and through you. We may be in a place where we do not know the full picture then God is saying, you are not alone. That's what the word of God says. Wherever you are, you are placed as per my plan. You are placed as per my plan. And I am working in and through you. You are a work in progress. Each of us are work in progress. The Lord who called us is faithfully working in and through us. This is what we see that in, uh, there's an heavenly call to each of us through God. So let's turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. I'll read it this time. Okay, we'll I'll 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 get y'all involved. Okay. So not that I have already attended or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which. Christ Jesus has lay hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what we see here, we see that Apostle Paul setting his mind on certain things ahead of him. He's saying, no matter what problem I'm going through, no matter what is happening around me, the situation where I am right now may not be very pleasant, may not 
uh, you know, uh, 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 may not give me a picture that I'm part of God's call. But then there is a call that God is called. And I'm, I'm setting my focus on that, the end picture, the end result. And I'm setting my mind on that end result, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what people may talk about me. But then because I'm setting my focus on the end result, I'm keeping heaven more in my mind, I'm going ahead, I'm marching towards that goal. So we need to set a focus on that. Very well, a scholar Spurgeon says it this way. But while the work of Christ for us is perfect, the work of Christ for us is perfect, and it we believe to think of adding to it the work of the Holy Spirit in us is not perfect. That means the Spirit of the Lord who is in us is actually working in and through us that we may be Christ-like. The work in us is in progress so that every day, every day, we are working to be more like Christ Jesus. So this is what it is. It is a spiritual journey that Apostle Paul is talking about. He is asking each one of us, as he is sharing about his point of view, he is encouraging each of us as a man and woman of God, as a servant of God, there would be hurdles around our way. There will be trials that we may have to face. There would be sufferings that we may be enduring in our life, in our ministry. But then he's encouraging you and me, saying, set your focus on God. Don't allow the situation to declare what your life is ahead of you. That is temporary. Our emotions, our feelings are temporary. But the call on what God has placed on your life, that's permanent. So your Apostle Paul is encouraging each of us, set your focus right. Set your focus right. So that our heart will be strong to endure the present trial, the sufferings that we may be in, or the situation that we can overcome because we are setting a focus on the greater reward of what God has called each one of us through Christ Jesus. This is what he says that I press towards the, where is that verse? I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is what it, uh, even uh, in the gospel of Luke chapter 9 verse 62 where it says, when a man steps into the plough, is it good for him to look back? No. A servant of God who steps into the ministry, look ahead because you are not alone. Look ahead that Jesus is your strength. So Paul is encouraging each of us, when we put a hand to the plough, we should mm -hmm. refuse to look back, that we may press towards on what Jesus wanted each of us to do, so that God's will will be fulfilled in and through us. There's a purpose. There's a call and there's a purpose. And when we cooperate, it is not like, okay, God is called, so it is God's work to fulfill all that he has called, uh, all the purpose that he has in store for me. No. What do we start in fulfilling God's purpose? We see that, yes, there's a call and a purpose that God has for us, but God is a gentle God. He is expecting each of us to cooperate with Him, to partner with Him, so that we can be fruitful, so that God can fulfill His call and purpose through us. So what we need to do, we need to do our part by cooperating with God's call and purpose. Again, we are going back to uh, John chapter 15, where it says, when you abide in me and I abide in you, only then we can be fruitful. For each of us to be fruitful, we need the strength of God. Because the life that we lead, the path that we walk is not something natural that we can handle with a natural ability. It is something to do with God. We need God's strength in us. So that can only happen when we abide with God and E and M. And we can together lead so that we can fulfill the ministry that God has called each of us. 
So is it easy for us to know? OK, now we are in a place that we know our call, know our purpose. No, as we know the call and the purpose, the journey is not very easy. It's not a one day journey, isn't it? It's a lifelong journey. So as a human, there are days when it is good, when it's bad. There's an ups and downs, the feeling we have mood swings each and every day. There are times we may question, is this what God wants me to do in my life? Or am I doing it everything on my own? Is there God's call in my life? You know, enemy can bring this thought, this very question to our mind. When others are leading a normal and joyful life, why are you pressurizing yourself and disciplining yourself and saying that you have a call on God? You have a call of God on your life. Now, the enemy may put this question in your mind. If there's a call of God in your mind, why is it so difficult? The path should be so easy. It should be like the bed of roses, isn't it? Because it's God's call. But if you look back in the history, from the very beginning till in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, when God calls, the journey was not too easy. But what God promised, that he was with that person. God was with Abraham, even though when he stepped out in faith into an unknown journey, God fulfilled every promise that God promised to Abraham, isn't it? Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. Every promise that God promised to Abraham, God kept his promise. Was Abraham's journey very pleasant? No. He went through life and death threats. He went through difficult time, famine. He went through his own brother bittering many, many seasons in his life. But throughout the season that we see is he was a man of faith. He was a man of faith. So what did God call Abraham as? Father of faith. If you take the life of Moses, was it very easy? God called Moses supernatural deliverance from Egypt, isn't it? Tell me what God didn't do for Moses. Was his life very easy? No matter how much the Israelites saw the hand of God move upon Moses, each time when they faced the difficulty, they were ready to stone Moses. But Moses was a great leader. So was his life very smooth, very easy? How about David? God anointed him as a king, isn't it? Even when Saul was a king, God anointed David as a king. Now the scripture says David was a very courageous and a bold man. He faced Goliath and he killed him. He beheaded him even though he didn't have any soldier's training. Or he never looked equal to Goliath. But God was with David. Just because God was with David, was this journey very pleasant? No. Saul was chasing David to kill him, isn't it? So David had to run away from him. Run away from him, cave to cave, mountain to mountain, with his family, with his children. Not very easy. Hey, God has called him, anointed him as a king. Did David defend himself? Hey, listen, king, I am the king, not you. God has, you know, taken away the favor from you and he has put on me. You're no more the king and I can kill you. Even though he had many chances to kill Saul, but he refused to do it. What did God call David as? A man after God's own heart. In every situation, he sought God. He inquired with God. What would God do? He had the heart of God. Even though the situations that he fell, but he still seek God. He asked, he repented. He repented. He asked, God created me a cleaner that I may be like more like you. 
he cried out to God. So what happened to the disciples when we come to the New Testament? How was the call and purpose in their life? Was it very pleasant? They lived with Jesus. They saw Jesus face to face. But how was their life? Was it very pleasant? Though Jesus promised a comforter that he will give them, and he gave them the comforter on the day of Pentecost, they were very courageous and they were very bold after that. But their life, they had to face a lot of trials. But what was constant in them was not giving up attitude. They held, they, you know, took a hold of God's call in their life. This is the call that God has placed in my life. I need to lay hold of and walk, keeping my focus ahead so that I may lead my life to fulfill that heavenly call through Christ Jesus. So today, you and I have been invited into this to fulfill the ministry that God has called each of us. There's a call, there's a purpose. Now God is asking, look at that call and the purpose that I have placed within you so that you may take hold of that. This is what it says, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Each of us call and each of our purpose may be very different. But God has called each of us and he is saying that I have laid hold of it. Can you take up this call? Can you take up this ministry so that you may fulfill it in your time? So this is what... Uh, we see in the book of Colossians, Apostle Paul is encouraging Archippus. He's saying, Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, he says, And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may fulfill it. See, he is, Apostle Paul is not directly declaring or directly saying this to our keepers, but he is writing to the people of Colossians. Maybe Archippus was in a leadership, in certain leader, and he was appointed or he was in charge of the people of Colossians. And here, Apostle Paul is writing to the Colossians, the people in the Colossians, to encourage the leader. Because in our journey with the Lord, there would be ups and downs. We need encouragement. We need support to do what God has called us to do. Your Apostle Paul is encouraging Colossians to encourage the leader they have. You know, uh, Archippus saying that take heed, take special interest in the ministry that God has placed in you. And also in the other letter, in, uh, in the letter to Philemon, chapter 1, verse 2, he mentions saying that Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. So some of the scholars still debate that Archippus may be Philemon's son. Because Philemon was one of the uh, one of the person who encountered Lord, uh, who got uh, came into the knowledge of Christ through Apostle Paul, and he had a ministry in his house. So some of the scholars are still debating, but it's not confirmed that Archippus may be Philemon's son. Why? Because he is inquiring about Philemon, Philemon's wife, and then of Archippus. Maybe Archippus was um, no, uh, Philemon's son, or some other scholars talk about. Saying that maybe Archippus was a pastor or a leader in the church. Okay, so that's still a debate. But what is important point here? Important something important here is Apostle Paul is asking the people of Colossians to encourage your leader to do what God has called him to do. You got it. We need encouragement, so we need to hold on to it. Take heed of the ministry that God has placed in us. See. It's not that every time we would be encouraged by the people or encouraged by a ministry leaders where we are. But then we need to realize that this is God's work and it is God's ministry. We are serving God and we, the scripture says, whatever you do, you do it unto 
the Lord. So whatever you're doing, you need to keep in mind that you're doing unto the Lord. So when you're doing unto the Lord, you will not expect the encouragement or an appreciation from people around you. So you will not be a men pleaser, as simple as that. People look at me, my leaders look at me, people look at me or no, but I do what I'm called to do by the Lord. My labor in the Lord, that Lord will reward me. Because the scripture says, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. The last verse in the chapter talks about, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor, not in vain in the Lord. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So here, Apostle Paul is not talking about we serving in the Lord or we working for God. Work is something that is very limited. You say, okay, I work from 9 to 5 and that's it. Do not expect more from me. But here, God is not calling us to work. He's asking us to labor. Labor means going beyond your time limit, going that extra mile, doing everything for God above and beyond that has been expected because that's how god blesses us isn't it he never blesses us with a measure ephesians 3 20 how does god bless each one of us exceedingly abundantly above and beyond that we could ask think or imagine we are the representative of god we are the ambassadors of god so the nature of god should be in us if god is asking us to work we need to labor in him so in one of the comment in mother teresa's ministry okay she says i'm looking for volunteers to serve in my ministry but i don't want any volunteers to come and work in my ministry but i want them to labor what does labor mean being ready to serve the lord despite the time night and day labor means somebody who's working very hard beyond their ability beyond their strength like complete strength sorry complete strength depending on god god i've gone i'm i'm weak I'm done with my strength. I need your strength to do what I have to do, depending on God. So each of us, when we are called into God's kingdom, we are not expected to work. We need to labor in the Lord, go beyond our ability. This is something that has been placed within us. It is not a, uh, It is not a favor that we are doing. It is something a command. It is something that duty that we need to do. When we are in the Lord, we need to labor in the Lord. That is one of the quality of God's servant. That I labor in the Lord. Paul said, I labor in the Lord. Because I receive that reward from him. Even if I labor... Even if you know you don't, you're not been encouraged by people around you, by your leaders, by your ministry people, that's okay. Set your focus on God because your reward is from the Lord. Because the word of God says that every work that you do will not go unnoticed from God. Because our God is a God who sees. A God is a God who sees. And he also looks at your heart attitude. You're saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. So whatever you do unto the Lord, Lord will reward you. Maybe this is the time that you're serving in a different ministry. May God would have called you for a greater call. For a, a God would have called you for a greater ministry. But then before god could allow you to step into the area of your ministry he has asked you to serve in other ministries so this is what the word of god says he says if you're faithful in little things he will bless you with much more 
when you're faithful so when god is given you the small things in your hand especially as you are in the bible college you're serving in different areas different areas but when you serve and create you friends look up to the lord saying lord i'm doing it for you as i'm serving you faithfully i know my reward is from you when you place me in a bigger ministry you will help me you will lead me you will give me the help that i needed you will add the destiny helpers into my ministry lord as you're watching me as i'm serving you faithfully now how can we say that we serve god faithfully only when we actually put that work in our hand when we faithfully serve is when we can look at god and say lord i've served you faithfully so whatever area you're doing do it as though you're doing it unto lord be god conscious every area you say lord your i am i'm doing this for you though it is very hard it is very difficult it is above and beyond my ability it is costing all my strength but i'm going beyond what i can do because you are in me you are strengthening me there is a heavenly call in Christ Jesus we all move towards this heavenly call so as we speak it is a spiritual journey that apostle paul is talking about this divine heavenly call that each of us should have this in our mind so that we can lay hold of it and uh, you know work towards completing that heavenly call so how do we fulfill our ministry we see in um, Colossians chapter 4 verse 17 we are on page 107 Colossians chapter 4 verse 17 it says yeah take heed of your ministry we finish labor in the lord yeah so uh page 108 the work flows out of our life in Christ Jesus how does this work that we do flows out of Christ let's turn to Romans chapter 15 verse 17 to 19 it says therefore i have reason to glory in christ jesus in the things which pertain to god for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about to irkim i have fulfilled preached the gospel of christ so we read also in uh, romans 17 to 19 the passion translation we see that paul is confident to speak about the ministry that he was able to do through the help of jesus christ so he recognized that this ministry is from god it is not on his own he knows the very dramatic encounter that he had on the way to the road of damascus so that nor paul nor others will take uh, you know take the call that god has placed on paul's life for granted he had a very dramatic call so that each time when this thought comes when this doubt uh, doubt comes knocks his mind and you know he has this question am i called by god why should i endure all these suffering and trials but each time when he has this doubt god reminds him of this dramatic call that he had on the road to damascus saying that apostle paul it's not you on your own taken up this it is that i who called you do you remember that you were made blind that you lost your sight Do you remember that I sent you to Ananias to pray for you so that you get back your sight so it was not something that you have taken up on your own it was I who called you so similar way each of us god has called us god has called us the very encounter that you may had with jesus he will remind you till the end of your day that you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and i am the god who is faithful to fulfill the call that i have placed in you so with confident 
with boldness go ahead and do the ministry that god has called each of us because this is what god keeps reminding each of us every time if you want to see your ministry being fruitful let john 15 be in your heart and mind that you may abide in him and he may abide in you so that you see the work of god bearing fruit in your life in your ministry where you are so the minute we know that we are serving god we need to serve in boldness and in courage because this is not an earthly call it is not somebody who has appointed you from this earth but it is god's call it's an heavenly call you are the minister of god you are the ambassador of christ jesus you are the representative of the heavenly god so you need to walk in boldness and in courage so how do we walk in boldness and courage we remember the instance isn't it after the death of jesus and his resurrection what happened to the apostles they flee they were they were filled with fear they ran away some of them were back to their work that they were doing but then god called them all back into one place though they were all fearful in the you know came together in the upper room they all prayed when they prayed what happened the spirit of the lord the comforter whom jesus promised will abide with them forever came into them few minutes back the disciples were so fearful of people they were literally hiding behind the wall but after the encounter after being filled by the holy spirit here they are out speaking boldly addressing 3000 men out there and peter being a fisherman didn't have any eloquent in speech but then he is addressing each one of them with boldness and with courage with eloquent of speech now where did he get this boldness courage and speech the spirit of the lord who abides in him enabling him to be bold to be courageous to speak in knowledge of christ the one who didn't have any academic skill he never went to a college or like the other pharisees and sadducees scribes who studied the scriptures or the torah as well but from where is he speaking the spirit of the lord who is in you will guide you and will teach you when you set when you align yourself to the will of god you see god speak and move in and through you now if the god can speak in and through peter who was a very simple fisherman was so fearful do you think god will not do that through you and me don't look down on yourself don't let's not look at you know uh, that we are some uh, you know uh, you know we are not capable enough to do what god is called to do a uh, god has made a wrong choice by calling each of us god is looking at each of us and saying i have called you and i have not made a mistake by calling you the god who called you will equip you for that greater call he is ministering in and through you don't consider yourself less he knows your end from the beginning he knows our background he knows our weaknesses but god is saying i can glorify myself in your weakness when you trust me if you have weakness within you praise god because that is the very area that god could help you work through because the people the 3000 people when they uh, heard peter minister to them they looked at peter and they said he is a fisherman isn't he is a, a fisherman from where did he get this knowledge from where did he get this courage the boldness that he is speaking when we do god's call god himself will back us up he himself will back us up all we need to do is hold on to god be soaked in his word and in spirit god will lead each of us set our mind our heart align to what god has called us when we set ourselves 
right to what God has called us. You see, God will lead us. God will lead us. So let's end the session uh, here, and we will continue later from where we have stopped from page uh, 110. OK, we will pray. Let's ask God. God, here I am. I surrender myself as I am into your hand so that I may be an ambassador, a minister of God, and help me to serve you with courage and with boldness. Father God, here I lift up each one of us in your hand, O oh Father. Lord, despite our weakness, Father, we come before you, declaring your strength over us. Lord, I pray that, Lord, as your word says in John 15, as we abide in you and you abide in us, you will make us fruitful, O oh Father. Lord, I pray and I declare your strength, your boldness, your courage over each one of us, O oh Lord. I pray that you will equip us in your word and in your spirit, O oh Father. You will lead us and guide us as the Lord you wear with each of the servant of God. So shall you be with us, and you will lead us, you will guide us, you will strengthen us to fulfill that call that you have called each of us, oh Lord. Because the scripture says that God called you is faithful enough to fulfill the call that he has called each of us. In. Thank you, Lord, that we are assured that you are holding our right hand and you're leading us in this journey. And we are not alone, but you with us. Thank you, Father, for that assurance. Thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. I hope it was a blessing to each one of us. Let's hold on to what God has laid hold on each of us. Thank you and God bless.